Hello, and yes, welcome to another video, guys. My hair is doing something very strange up there. <laughs> um, this is the, the very weird video for me because I haven't made a video in a good two weeks, which I'll apologise for. The, the world has just been going crazy, and I think that's the, the thing that I want to address here. Um, the the last time I made a video here on this channel, the world was in somewhat somewhat of a normal state. Somewhat. There were some countries already going into... Um, the crisis a lot earlier than what we were here in the UK and America but um yeah over the last two weeks especially the last week the world has become a bit chaotic uh, because of the old coronavirus which has been spreading which is a terrible thing uh, and I know a lot of people are already in lockdown and um you know I just wanted to say that I hope everyone's staying safe everyone's staying inside um, you know, here in the UK, we've literally just gone into lockdown in London, which I still don't think is enough because people like my sister still think that she's going to be able to go out and socialise. So maybe quarantine is the best thing here. I don't know. Um, I'm not working from home. I'm not allowed to. My job doesn't allow it. So I am still going to work. But other than that, I am staying inside at all times. Um, so, yeah, I hope everyone's staying safe and all that stuff. Um, unfortunately, it's been a bit of a dampener on the movie industry because... There aren't any films coming out now. Um, I don't know what's happening with like Blu-ray pre-orders. I haven't got many Blu-ray pre-orders on at the minute. I don't know if they're getting delayed. I really don't. Um, but of course, cinema releases have been delayed. This is going to affect the movie industry in a big way, which is what this channel is about, movies and TV series. Um, as is my podcast, which there's a link to that in the description. Me and my friend Ryan are going to try and figure out how we're going to record them for the upcoming months because we're not allowed to see each other or we shouldn't see each other just in case so um we've got to figure out a way to record them remotely uh so it's been a strange strange week um so it's um i i, I just wanted to say that i hope everyone's doing well because i know some a couple people who have got this now and it's um it's not very nice it's not um but anyway we're all cracking on we're all doing the best we can anyway today heard you got a bit of a downer video <laughs> i'm talking about some films here which i don't necessarily hate them or dislike all of them some of these films are okay but these are films that i wish didn't exist <laughs> um so i've got a top 10 here films i wish were never made or made differently at least i don't like the way these films went um, so I've got a top 10 and I've got some honourable mentions. Now, before we get started, we've got to say this is my opinion, guys. If I slag off a film here that you like, it's not to make you feel upset. This is my opinion. Um, you have your opinion and we're all entitled to our opinions. Also, I don't, as I say, I don't hate all these films. There's a couple films here I, I hate. But there's I don't really hate all of these. These are just films which I think ruined something special that a previous film or the previous or the director previously made it hurts the franchise it doesn't make any sense it hurts what come before and it's almost insulting so i guess that's a good way to say it. these are films which i felt a little bit insulted by so i've got some honorable mentions before we get into the top 10 so i'm going to just pop them up now a good day to die hard i really like the first four die hard movies and then this one was just just money making cash grab and i didn't enjoy it next up is predators that's right the 2017 18 2018 i think it was 2018 movie uh the thing about predators is i never considered predators to be like a amazing property but i really like the first one and i really like the 2010 one and the second one is okay there hadn't been a bad pred predator film it's like you always sort of knew you can go into them having a good time but i hated this one i thought the story was ridiculous how the predator come to earth for autism and then there was a robot predator suit at the end it just didn't work for me i really hated this film um so yeah then we got the amazing spider-man 2 um yeah i i, I could have easily put spider-man 3 in here but i decided to pick what spider-man film i disliked the most and i went with the amazing spider-man 2 um uh, this film i really don't like anything about it and i just wish it didn't exist um I can find something in every Spider-Man film, even the weaker ones, like Spider-Man 3 and The Amazing Spider-Man 1, um, which are the weaker ones for me. Um, I can find something in them that I can still watch and get have a good time with. The Amazing Spider-Man 2, there's literally, I can think of like two scenes in it that I like. So I really dislike this film and I wish it was never made. X-Men Dark Phoenix, 
Um, yeah, this this film just who cares? It's I feel like even though I weren't a big fan of Apocalypse, I feel like he's the big bad, and that might have been a good place to end it. This was just uh, X Men. It, it, it was just the, it was just the third X Men film made all over again, um, and they didn't learn from any of their mistakes, which is why it's a kind of laughable movie. They still got the Phoenix completely wrong, <laughs> and it was it was a pretty snore fest for the most of it, uh, with some really stupid scenes thrown in. Next up, I'm going to throw another X Men film in. I'm going to do X Men Origins. I love Hugh Jackman. Nearly every X Men film that Hugh Jackman's been in has been good. Um, other than this one, it kind of damaged his reputation as the Wolverine a bit for a while there. Uh, but if it wasn't for Logan, I don't think in Days of Future Past, I think people might have had a sour taste in their, in their mouth for Hugh Jackman's portrayal of that character. It's uh, He is good in it, Hugh Jackman, but he is literally the only good thing about it. This film sucks in every way, from the visuals to the sound effects to the cheesy editing. Uh, it's, it's just not a good movie. And then last one I want to talk about is Jurassic World 2. I like all the Jurassic Park films. I'll even stick up for the third one. I think there's some entertaining moments in it. Uh, I, I really like just the, the idea of dinosaurs chasing people around the, these islands and stuff. This one started off, off okay when they were on the island. But then when they went back to this mansion, it's almost they went for a horror approach. With a haunted mansion with this one dinosaur creeping around. And then at the same time, you've got the most comic book characters ever written in the villains were hilarious uh so yeah jurassic world 2 is a film which i just wish was made differently that one i wish that one was made differently but the rest of the ones that i just mentioned if they didn't exist i i wouldn't care at all okay so now we're going into the top 10. These are 10 films which I wish were made differently or just didn't exist. I just don't care about these films at all, is what I'm saying. I mean, I care a bit because I'm on YouTube talking about them. <laughs> but anyway, coming in at number 10, I'm going to talk about Pirates of the Caribbean, Salazar's Revenge. Or Dead Man Tell No Tales? Something like that? I don't know. I know the title's changed. What is it here in the UK? It's Salazar's Revenge here. I'm pretty sure in America it's Dead Man Tell No Tales. Both titles are, uh, make sense, I suppose. Um, although Dead Men Tell No Tales, I'm pretty sure it's from the second pirate film. Anyway, I love the original three Gore Ravinsky pirate films. I think they're great. I love that director. I'm a big fan of him. I loved Rango as well. I'm one of the few people who didn't mind The Lone Ranger. I'm in the minority there. But I'm a big fan of that director and his style. So when he left Pirates, I think we all knew that it was, it was probably going to take a dip in quality. And it did. But On Stranger Tides was... Good. It was fun. Jack was still Jack. It was entertaining. This film, however, it, it, it almost ruined the last ones a bit because there were things in it which didn't make sense. There were they, they, It just shows the little effort that went into it. There are scenes like when you see Jack get his compass originally, but then if you remember from the original three, Tia Dharma said she gave it to him. So you can just tell that the filmmakers here are paying barely any attention to the previous efforts of the original Pirates films, the previous lore, the previous stories. They're just chucking it all in there. The Flying Dutchman stuff will be in on the Flying Dutchman. I thought that was a great sacrifice in the third film. And it was just undone really poorly in this. Um, Salazar, he didn't really make much sense. I hated that they gave Barbosa a daughter. I thought that was terrible, terrible writing. So it means around the time of the third film, I'm guessing he would have had a kid. Yeah. I I don't know. I thought it was abs it was really, really bad writing that film. And visually, I didn't think it was that great compared to other Pirates films. It's weird. I think because they filmed the, the two Disney ones on Strange Tides and Salazar's Revenge, they film in the, on, most of it on green screens and stuff. They go up on set for some of it. But the original three Pirates films, nearly all of it was done on sets. And you can really tell. Um, the third one, you know, you had the, the Maelstrom beard, and that was all filmed in the big hanging. You can see the making of it, and it's quite entertaining. But the, 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 you can tell that the first three, a lot more effort went into making them. Anyway, Pirates of the Caribbean 5, I'm pleased they did a fifth one. I, You know, it's still up in the air whether they're going to do a sixth one or not. I don't think they are, but all this Johnny Steph, Amber Heard stuff's happening, and people are petitioning for Johnny Depp to come back. So I don't know if there'll be a sixth one. I like Pirates, I'm pleased they made a fifth one. I just don't care about this film. It hurt the franchise for me. 
Um, I wish it was made differently, made better. But I hope to see a sixth one. Hope they get it back on track. Next up is Independence Day 2. It has a name. I don't know what it is. Resurgence or something like that. I might have actually got it in one there. I don't know. I know it begins with an R. And it's a name like that. Um, I love the original Independence Day. It's one of the classic, classic films from the 90s, early 2000s that everyone sort of saw. It's a great movie. Will Smith's fantastic in it. So is Jeff Goldblum. Um, it's it's a really, really entertaining alien invasion film. And I think it might be the best alien invasion film I've seen um, that doesn't involve like superheroes or something like that. I think it's great. I think it's really cool. It's somewhat realistic as to how... <laughs> I mean, you know, not that that's going to happen, but if aliens come down and start destroying major cities, I think it takes quite a realistic approach, which is really good. I love it. Second one, um, Aliens Are Coming Back, and there was a lot of hype for this when the film was coming out. I remember a lot of people posting about it, um, and then, of course, we found out Will Smith weren't coming back. A little bit rocky start there. Um, Liam Hemsworth got cast, the, the B-Tech Hemsworth brother. I like Liam Hemsworth, but I'm sure they probably tried to get Chris first, and then I like, right, he said no, so we'll go for the backup. We'll go for Liam. The plot to this film was hilarious. I can't remember it too well, but I remember at the start, Jeff Goldblum's in a ship with someone and they're bouncing between space and this alien ship and Earth. They literally, they go down, pick Liam Hemsworth up and they're back up to space. It's like, it just doesn't have the realistic effect that the first one had. And um, there's another weird alien in it that's like a, a robot ball. It was laughable. There's a giant, it feels like an aliens ripoff because there's like a giant queen one or something, a massive one that comes down to Earth. Yeah, it, it the film was just stupid, and it really hurt the first one. It's like, no, I don't want this to be connected to the first one. I like the first one as it is. I'm going to let the first one and just uh, let it be and just pretend that the second one doesn't exist at all. Because I even bring back characters from the dead from the first one, which is ridiculous. Anyway, so Independence Day 2 sucks. I wish this film was never made. Next up is Cats. Yeah, I know what a lot of you are saying. It's like, well, you're just saying that because it's a terrible film. And it is a terrible film. But there's a lot of terrible films that I could put on this list. But I, I've put this one on here because I really like Tom Tom Hopper's, or Hooper's um, portrayal of the Les Miserables production. I have it on Blu-ray here somewhere. Les Miserables. It's right here. Um, I love that film. I think it's great. And I was so excited for Cats. And before the trailer, this is even before the trailer, because even the tr first trailer was signs of, of things to come. But I was saying to people, I said, don't worry, it's going to be good. I, I, I have faith, I don't know anything about Cats really, but I have faith that this is going to be good. Because Dom, Tom Hooper's Les Miserables is fantastic, it's one of my favourite musicals, if not maybe my favourite musical. First trailer hit, immediately knew there was signs that this film weren't going to be great. But I was like, maybe it'll be okay. Maybe it looks awful, but maybe it'll be okay on the big screen in the, the entire hour and a half length. And it wasn't. It was an awful film. <laughs> well, I didn't have a clue what was going on for most of the film. Things were just happening. It was painful to look at. And there just really wasn't anything good about it. Let's face it. I don't know what was good about it. I was happy when it ended. Next up is Transformers The Last Night. Now, uh, these ones, this one here, I think people have got to take with a, a grain of salt because Transformers has a lot of misses. Um, I think a lot of people will argue that they're all bad other than the first one, maybe. And maybe Bumblebee. Uh, so, the, Transformers 2 is a terrible film, but I kind of enjoy it. It's fun. I like the third one. I think the third one's alright. Um, the fourth one is also okay. I'm just going to say okay. It's... Middle of the road completely for me. This one here was just painful. It took everything from the first ones that annoyed me and amped it up to a hundred. The cringy humour is just awful. The racism in this film with some of the robots and stuff, some of the things that they're doing and saying and the way they act is embarrassing. Um, it just seems like it took everything from the last ones which people disliked and amped it all up to 100 and put it in your face in this film. And it wasn't even entertaining. The film was just loud and annoying. And I didn't care. And yeah, I, I, I just wish this film didn't exist. Because I always try to stick up for Transformers films. 
to a certain degree, I'd always say, oh, they're okay, they're fine, they're innocent. But after this one, I can't do it anymore. Next up is Indiana Jones 4. Um, I can't even remember what the fourth one's called. What is it called? I've got the box set here somewhere. I've tried to erase that film from my mind, mostly. Indiana Jones 4. And is it the Crystal Skull? Pretty sure it's the Crystal Skull, isn't it? Yes, Crystal Skull. Um, love the original three Indiana Jones films. They're almost perfect. They are really in my top five trilogy. It's in my top five trilogies, um, the original three. Um, I think they're absolutely fantastic. They're incredible movies. And I like the fact that there's this um, weird law to Indiana Jones where these kind of mythical things exist on Earth. There's a box that when you open it, you're going to melt. There's a man who can pull your heart out. As the, you've got all the cups, you know, it, it, you know, obviously all this stuff is mythical, but it's, um, it's not blowing it out of the water, whereas this one did. It's like, oh, aliens, flying saucer. It's, it's too much for me. I didn't enjoy it. It got a bit silly as well. I know Indiana Jones has some silly moments in it, but they're somewhat still believable. In this one, you've got Shia LaBeouf swinging through the trees with monkeys, and it's, it's a very laughable. This film hurt Indiana Jones. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the great reputation that it once did because a lot of people still think back to the fourth movie. Harrison Ford doesn't even feel like he wants to be there in this film. It's a complete cash grab, this film. It hurt the other three films. Um, yeah, it's just one of those things where it's like, I still love watching the original three, but this one just doesn't feel like it's connected. It doesn't feel like it's part of that universe. Um, so Indiana Jones 4, Crystal Skull, I wish it was never made. Next up is Alien Resurrection. I, I'm a big Aliens fan. I love Aliens. Um, you'll notice I'm not talking about an Alien vs. Predator film here just because the Aliens in it are enough to say, okay, it's fine. Even though I hate the second one. I hate the second Alien vs. Predator so much. But it doesn't annoy me like other films here on this list. Um, Alien Resurrection, Resur is it Resur Resurrect? I don't know. Again, I've got it here. I'll just look. Alien Resur it is Resurrection. I was right. Resurgence is Independence Day. Oh, they've all got such confusing names. Um, <laughs> I I don't mind the third one. I know there was a lot of production issues. There was a lot of behind the scenes stuff with this one, which weren't working. Um, but the third one's okay for me. And I kind of like this is the end of Ripley's story. She dies. The end cool it was it was an okay ending i didn't hate it like some people it's fine there we go that's the end they're gonna do another alien film fair enough but why bring ripley back from the dead her story is over i love the character of ripley but the way they ended her story it's like it's over so they bring her back it was not handled well it was really not very interesting to watch the new side characters were all pretty boring and unlikable I think they tried to do another Aliens. It's funny how you got the original Alien, then Alien 3, where it's just like kind of one alien hunting. Two was an action one, and then four. It's like three kind of tried to copy one in a way, and four's trying to copy two in a way, and it just doesn't do it as well. The characters all in the first Aliens, Aliens 2, um, are so interesting and so great and fun to watch. And this one, they're just, they're just not. They're just comic book characters um, who are just not interesting. And there's that weird alien at the end, which is it's just not nice to look at. And the way it dies is pretty hilarious. I hate this film. I wish it wasn't made. It's the stinker in the alien franchise for me. And for some reason, people enjoy mm, trashing three more, which baffles me a bit. But um, Aliens Resurrection, I wish it didn't made. It's a terrible movie. Next up is um, one of the worst films ever made. And I'm, I'm pretty sure people are going to laugh at me for even talking about it. But I'm going to talk about it. Jaws the Revenge. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I've seen all the sequels to Jaws. Because when I was a kid, my aunt said, you got to watch the Jaws films. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. But yeah, I'd love to. And she bought me a box set for Christmas. And it had Jaws 2, 3D, and The Revenge in it. And it didn't have the first one in because Spielberg didn't want the first one to be associated with those films. So I actually saw the first one last. And now it is the only Jaws film I have in my collection. I'm not entirely sure where it is at the minute in my collection, but it's it's here somewhere. There it is. 
Look, the first one is classic. It's in my top ten films ever. I think the first Jaws film is a masterpiece. I'll stick up for the second one. It's not that bad. It's fine. It's a decent film. Nowhere near as good as the first one, but it's it's a decent watch. In fact, I wouldn't mind owning it one day again. 3D is terrible. It's horrific, but it's hilarious, and I can have a good time with it. It's a bad film, but it's so bad it's funny. It's one of those. It's like The Room, where it's like, yeah, it's awful, but it's funny. Jaws the Revenge is painful and stupid. It's disrespectful because it tries to connect all the Jaws films. I know you've got these reoccurring characters in it. You've got um, Chief Brody's son from the original running throughout uh, Jaws 3D and Jaws the Revenge. So I know you've got them popping up again, but I still always looked at them as their own films because... They get more and more stupid and I'm like, I don't want to connect these to the original film. I'm like Spielberg. I don't want them to be associated with the original film. This one, it's like, this shark is out for revenge. Because of, of what happened in the last films. Which is stupid as hell. It is a awful premise. The shark follows um, Brody's wife. Like, across the Atlantic at um ocean it tracks her it follows her i think to the bahamas i think this is where this one's set i'm not joking this is part of the plot it's it's trying to connect these films and making the shark so much more than it was in the original and it hurts the previous films which is why this film is insulting not to mention the really dumb stuff like how the shark dies at the end it jumps up in front of the ship and the front of the ship the wooden pointy bit on the front that connects the front sail stabs it the shark roars like a lion and then explodes. Ugh, terrible, terrible movie. Next up is Terminator Dark Fate. Um, I could have picked many of Terminator films to go here. I think the original two Terminator films are amazing. I have a soft spot for the third one. I grew up with it. But um, what's the fourth one called? For some reason, I still own that. Salvation and Genesis are pretty damn terrible. But I don't find them as insulting as this one. You know, Salvation actually tried to do the war. But yes, that's what people wanted. You failed miserably, but okay, you tried. Genesis is laughably bad. It's, it's you know, it's the Jaws 3D of the Terminator franchise where it's like, it's bad, but it's funny bad. So I don't hate it. I don't wish it didn't exist. I just don't care that it exists, but I don't wish it didn't. Dark Fate, I kind of wish didn't exist. This was a... See, this is the one of the films on the list which I have a hard time ragging about because it was a well-made movie. It was. Um, in fact, it was entertaining at times. I don't hate this movie. I, I definitely prefer it to Genesis. I don't know if I prefer it to Salvation, but I definitely prefer it to Genesis. Um, but the reason I think I'd rather this one exist is because of how insulting it was to the original two, especially the second Terminator film, uh, Judgment Day, which is in my top 10 films ever. The way they handle previous characters from this franchise is insulting. And I can only imagine people who grew up with this film in the 80s. You know, I've just been watching since I was a little kid. Um, but people who watched this film when, you know, when it came out all the way up to today. And this is how they treat characters like John Connor. I'd be insulted. I really would. Um, so, yeah, I think Dark Fate is an okay movie. But in the Terminator franchise, I think it's absolutely appalling and I wish it didn't exist. Bit of a hard one to talk about for me, that one. Because as I say, I think you guys can understand here that I don't hate the movie. But I really wish it didn't exist. Um, so anyway, Terminator Dark Fate. Yeah. Justice League. We've got to my... Th this is number two, by the way. There's one more film after this for me to talk about. And these top two films I, I really hate with a passion. Justice League is a horrific movie, and I'll explain why. Uh, number one, it doesn't take its origins. These comic book characters are not done right at all. Batman smiles in this and cracks a couple jokes. <sighs> the Flash is just embarrassing in this. Ezra Miller cannot pull the Flash off in this movie. I have hope that in his own movie, apparently they're going to do Flashpoint. I have hope they'll give a better performance, but in this he's embarrassing. I really wanted to see a dark Superman, and they just didn't have the balls to do it. Now, I understand this film 
and the film above it had a lot a lot of production issues like this one Zack Snyder's daughter died while he was filming and he walked away and he was making this really dark follow-on from Batman v Superman it was an actual follow-on from Batman v Superman they were actually going to continue exploring this Superman going dark I think they were going to do Steppenwolf and slowly introduce dark side it was sounding interesting but then Josh Whedon walked in who done the first Avengers and Age of Ultron, which are both decent films. I like the first Avengers a lot, and Age of Ultron's decent. But he walked in here, and I think they just said, just give us a fun, innocent film like the first Avengers. And the thing is, those characters have been built up, and the story was still building. But here he just done his own thing and kind of tried to wrap it up almost. Um, and it, it didn't work at all. It clashed with S Zack Snyder's vision a lot. And the film is really embarrassing. The story just picks and takes so much from other comic book movies. None of the characters done well. There are just things which are really stupid and poorly done. Like even right at the start when Batman finds one of the... I can't remember what they're called, but the flying demon things. He finds one. He jumps on his back and they fly all around Gotham City. Then they land back on the exact same rooftop. And Batman has a conversation with a criminal. And then Batman just walks away and the criminal can also probably just walk away it's it's just a lack of care in the writing the film there are so many moments throughout the entire film that are like that and the film just sucks it's not a well-made movie and i wish it didn't exist because i feel like even though Zack snyder's vision wasn't great like batman v superman was by no means a very good i thought it was okay his vision of what he was planning to do, because there was going to be another three films after Batman v Superman, so he had a trilogy of five, Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, Justice League, and another two. It sounds so much more interesting than what we're getting at the minute from DC, even though I enjoyed Shazam and Aquaman and Wonder Woman and Birds of Prey. I would have really liked to see the story that Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman had started carry on, and I would have liked to see where it went, even if it weren't great. It would have been nice just to see something a bit original. Whereas um, Justice League was the furthest thing from that and it sucked. But no, my number one, the, the film I wish... I don't wish this didn't exist because it has to. I just wish it was made completely differently. Is Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker. Um, yeah, people know I really hate this film. I've done a review here where I actually faced a bit of backlash on it because I called certain people out for not understanding it. And um, at the risk of facing more backlash, I still stand by what I said. I think the film is embarrassing. It And a lot of people try to defend the film by saying it's still better than The, Rise of, uh, the Last Jedi. I don't care about The Last Jedi. I'm not talking about The Last Jedi. I didn't hate that film personally. Um, it's by no means a great film either. But I'm not talking about The Last Jedi. I'm talking about just this. The Last Jedi was a stepping stone for why this film failed, because there was a huge backlash. And Disney thought, we're not going to carry this on. We can't. We can't. People hated it too much. They really could have. <laughs> they just could have written a better film. Um, so they brought JJ back, said to JJ, just, just do fan service. Just do fan service. So he did. He brought back the Emperor, which is still stupid. And by the way, since my review of that movie... Um, They've tried to change things in comics, which shows to me that Lucasfilm and Disney are fully aware that the film isn't very good. They've uh, the Palpatine is now a clone. That was never said once in the film. And the writers of the film even come out last week and said, we didn't know he was a clone when we were making it. They don't have a clue what they were doing on this film. JJ just threw a load of things on the table and they picked a few out. They went, Emperor, yes. The Raylo, yes. Easter egg hunt across the galaxy. Yes, put it all together, boom. We just write a very quick, sloppy story. Um, it's disrespectful to the originals. The Emperor, his soul survived and went into a clone. This is what apparently happens. Um, makes Vader's story completely pointless. He didn't bring balance to the galaxy because the Emperor survives. So the whole story of the original six, Anakin and Vader's story, is pointless. Anakin didn't bring balance to the Force. And it's hilarious because they even addressed that in the film. When Ray hears all these voices and they didn't have the balls to do the false ghosts, Anakin even says, bring balance as I once did. It's like, you didn't, mate. Palpatine got away. <laughs> you didn't bring balance. Uh, the film is hilarious at times. Uh, you can tell there are scenes where it's just edited so poorly because there's another 45 minutes apparently out there because everyone's now saying release the JJ cut, which I don't want to see. I don't want to see anything else to do with this film. Um... You can tell. You can really tell. There are scenes 
Like when Ray returns at the end of the film, you see Finn and Poe look at her like, what? And you know that's when, in another cut version of the film, because there have been other versions of the film, Ray brought Kylo back. And then they edited it quickly to where Ray's walking on her own because Kylo, of course, dies in that hilarious scene. And um, all of a sudden they're happy. It's, you can just tell that the film is edited so poorly, so sloppy. There's no respect to original characters here. And I know people are going to throw The Last Jedi up there with Luke. I don't care. I don't care. I'm not talking about that film. Leia's death was awful. Awful. I know they didn't have much to work with. I'm not going to be too critical here, but I, I still didn't like it. I'm sure they could have done better if they really tried. Um, I don't really know what else to say about this film, to be honest. Even the actors are turning against it. Um, Oscar Isaacs has turned against it. A lot of actors have just not even bothered promoting it. John Boyega has gone crazy online, and I've got mad respect to, for the guy. Um, for just sticking up for people who realise that this film is poorly made and shows... No respect to the originals. It doesn't. It doesn't. It, the novel, the novelization, and the comics at the minute are completely tearing this film apart. And they're trying to fix it, but they're making it worse. Did you know that Ray's dad is also the emperor? It's so so stupid. Um, and I I hate this film with a passion. And it's a shame because I love Star Wars. I even stick up for the prequels. Um, so yeah. Anyway, there's my. Rise of Skywalker rant again um, here on this channel. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I, I don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm, I always wanted an episode seven through nine. I liked seven. I didn't mind eight, nine. I obviously didn't like, and it kind of ruined the previous two for me. I just wish this film had been made differently. I really do. I don't like the direction they went in at all. But there we go, there are 10 films I wish just didn't exist and a couple honourable mentions. As I say, they're not the worst films ever. There are a couple films there that I really dislike. But they're not my top 10 worst films ever. They're not. They're just 10 films I wish were made differently or just never made at all. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, there's links in the description to my um, my podcast, my Twitter, Instagram, all that other stuff, all that lovely stuff. Um, I hope you've all enjoyed it. As always, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like the video, leave a message. Stay safe, stay inside, and I'll see you guys next time for another video. Bye-bye.